Okay, it says, given that AB is parallel to CD, show that angle B is congruent to angle D. Name all the congruent parts based on the congruent triangles. All right, so this isn't an actual proof. It says show. Okay, we kind of have to go through the process of proof. You know, basically, I would be more, more often stating the reasons, or sorry, stating the statements, right? This is true, this is true, this is true. It doesn't say prove. If it says prove, then I'm going to prove it. But if it just says show, <coughs> if you just kind of go through the statement part of the proof, that'll be sufficient. So um, I'm going to mark up the figure first and we can list out what we know. So can we all see that AB is parallel to CD? That's given. And also marked on the figure, AB is congruent to DC. Right? Can we all see there are two triangles here? Mm -hmm. All right. So... Just realize there's one more property you don't know that I'm going to give you real quick. Did we use the reflexive property this year? No. Perfect. This is a pretty impressive property. Reflexive property, a number equals itself, an object is congruent to itself. Okay. Look at the two triangles in the picture created by making AC happen here. We got ABC over here, we got ABC over there. Can everybody see that segment AC is part of both of those triangles? Right? So the reflexive property, I know that AC is congruent to itself. I don't know if it's congruent to anything else. I'm going to mark it with two, two marks instead of one. So as far as stating things, I'm going to state, state AB is parallel to CD. I'm going to state AB is congruent to CD. I'm going to state AC is congruent to AC. Right. So... Both of these things were given to me. That's the reflexive property. And as I'm going along this, again, I've got my, my rules. I've got side, angle, side, and I've got side, side, side in my brain. That's what I know how to show congruence of triangles. Okay. So notice AB and DC are congruent. That gives me a side. And AC congruent to AC, that gives me another side. So if I go with side, angle, side, I have to show a pair of angles are congruent. If I go with side, 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 I have to show a pair of sides are congruent, right? So let's start with the side, side, side. Let's look at that. Is there any mathematical reason that you've learned to this date that says that AD and BC should be the same length based on what you know so far? Any guarantees that AD and BC are the same length based on what we currently know in our mathematical knowledge to this date. They're parallel? They, I don't know if they're parallel or not. They might be. We aren't told they're parallel. They don't have to be parallel. This is kind of what the, the process is here. You have these things we can do. Can we do this? Can we do that? So it doesn't seem easy to show those are the same, right? Nothing's coming to, coming to mind right away, right? So let's venture over to the side angle side. If I'm going side angle side, I need, here's side side, this is the included angle of that triangle, and this, this is the included angle of that triangle, right? Okay. And currently what we have going on in this problem, we have parallel lines, right? We need to say that these angles are congruent to each other. Is there any mathematical reason as to why A and C should be, or B, A, C, and A, C, D are congruent to each other? What is it, Blaine? Alternate interior angles. Here we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. Angle BAC and angle ACD are alternate interior angles, so they should be congruent. So I know that angle A is congruent to angle, sorry, angle, got an angle with three, angle BAC is congruent to angle ACD. Right? 
The reason I'm naming three instead of one letter angles, if I say angle A, is it this angle A, is it that angle A, is it the big angle A? So you use three letters B, A, C to be very clear about what angle you're talking about up in that little corner. There. So now I've got a side angle, side congruence. So now I know the triangle congruent. So the next statement, if I were doing a proof, would be that triangle, let's go triangle ABC, is congruent to triangle what? All right, so what in triangle, in the other triangle, what matches up to A? Which angle in this triangle? So we have this angle triangle here, ACD, and we have this triangle here, ACB. All right. So the black triangle is ABC, the red triangle is ACD. What triangle, what angle in the red triangle down here is matching the A in the black triangle here? C. C, right? A from the black triangle right there is congruent to C from the red triangle. So C has to be the first letter in the name of this triangle. So again, when we're naming the congruent triangle, it's very important we name the second triangle in the right order. Okay, um, I know for a fact, now that the triangles are congruent, I know corresponding pieces are congruent. I also know um, AB is matching to CD, right? So the fact that AB is the first two letters and C is there, so CD would have to be the second letter. Once I got two letters, the third letter has to be the only other letter there, which is A. So ABC is congruent to CDA. Again, if you write that in the wrong order, if you write ACD instead of CDA, you got it written wrong. And you're going to have wrong statements based on things after that. So, find a matching angle. A matches C. Put them in the right spot. Find a matching side AB and then matching CD. Make sure those are in the same order. And if we pair it up, make sure AC matches AC. Notice AC matches AC. So everything's good about that name. And then finally, once we have that set up, we're supposed to show that B is congruent to D. B is second, D is second, so now angle B is congruent to angle D. All right. Yeah, not a proof, but it kind of felt like a proof, right? Given information, reflexive property, alternate interior angles, side angle side, Corresponding parts, congruent triangles are congruent. All the theorems that we're dealing with right now, plus stuff we learned from other chapters. It does say name all the congruent parts based on the congruent triangle. So we've already got there's side, there's a side, there's an angle, there's an angle. So there's only one more pair of congruent pieces, right? So we can just erase all this. We already know that's congruent to that. We just figured out that's congruent to that. So what's left over is that AD should be congruent to BC based on their names, right? There's AD, there's BC. Before we got the triangles congruent, there was no way to tell they were congruent, but now that the triangles are congruent, now we can say they're congruent. All right, and then finally this angle up here should match this angle down here. And again, those aren't, that's angle A, but it's up where multiple angles are, so I'm going to say angle DAC is congruent to, try, to angle BCA. You can also go ACB, it doesn't matter what order you go in, as long as C is in the middle, as long as A is in the middle. So they're showing that B is congruent to D, and then all the co corresponding pieces congruent. There should be a total of six. Three sides, three angles. There's side, side, side. There's angle, angle, angle. So.